this is Xpong's new social media series Inside Xpong and today we're going to break down what you can expect from Xpong this year. We will talk about how Xpong is navigating through the challenges in the auto industry, what new products and features we can expect from the company to stay ahead of the increasing competition, the overall strategy moving forward and much much more. So let's get started right now. Before we dive in, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Guberman and I'm an electric vehicle social media influencer based in California. I host my own electric car news YouTube channel called E4 Electric. And now I am hosting this exclusive Inside Xpong social media series that you're watching right now. Here, we'll keep you up to date on all of the exciting Xpong news, from new car reveals and customer events to Xpong location grand openings and interviews with senior executives. And there is a lot happening this month that we will be covering soon. From Xpong's new driver assistance features and opening of its first branded experience store in Oslo, Norway, to the P7 and P5 smart sedans showcased at the fully charged Live Europe in Amsterdam. But first, let's find out how Xpong performed in Q1 and more importantly, what we can expect in the months to come with my guest, Brian Gu. All right, Brian, so it looks like Xpong did well in the first quarter, but let's talk about the challenges ahead. Um, how is the company planning uh, on dealing with the supply chain issues uh, like the chip shortage, the battery supply limitations, and now the COVID restrictions, all of them affecting the production? Yes, Alex, uh, you're right. Um, we are actually operating a very challenging environment right now in China, um, as the world has seen that China is going to COVID lockdown measures in some of the major markets that we operate. And some of those markets are actually very important for us because they produce you know, a lot of our parts uh, and in, in interrupting our supply chain. Uh, so as a company, that we have to first of all be very nimble about our supply chain. So um, you know, our team has done a great job you know, sort of ahead of time, sort of stockpiled key components that allows to continue production during this uh, period. Secondly, is that we spend a lot of effort to test alternative supplying parts uh, in chips, in batteries, and other components that give us the flexibility of addressing uh, temporary shortages in supply chain. So, so far, um, if you look at our first quarter results, uh, we actually registered again 150% annual growth uh, in the first quarter, which is actually amazingly in a seven consecutive quarters of over 150% growth. And this second quarter, even though the COVID measures even more stringent uh, in Shanghai and part of Beijing, we still anticipate uh, in our quarterly guidance that on the high end, we can still deliver about 100% growth uh, on this second quarter. So, so we're still very you know, confident that our growth momentum and our business momentum is very strong, which is supported by our supply chain you know, strategies. Fair enough. Now, you know, Expo already has uh, quite a few impressive uh, in-house build features like the navigation guided pilot, uh, the cross-story memory parking function and a few others. But as you know, people always want more. So what do you have up your sleeve? Tell us what's coming up in the next few months. Well, um, there's quite a few things that we want to unveil to the world uh, and which will be leading in, in the industry. First of all, our navigation guided pilot uh, technology will get a boost to city level. So last year, everyone is very impressed by our highway NGP. But this year, we want to debut our city in GP. It does give the, the vehicle the ability to navigate in a city setting, for example, recognizing traffic lights, making left turns without protection, you know, waiting for the you know, passengers and traffic to pass, really deciding in a very complex driving environment. And that technology will be viewed uh, uh, you know, in the next few months. Then you know, we're looking forward to our G9, which is the flagship uh, SUV product that we kind of unveil in the third quarter. We start delivering 
in the fourth quarter. This will be a technologically leading product um, and also a flagship product for our uh, portfolio. It will have industry leading charging technology. For example, it has an 800 volt uh, power platform that can support a 480 kilowatt charging that give you the maximum capacity or capability of charging 200 kilometers range in about five minutes, which is the fastest uh, in, in this market. And then also uh, G9 will have the most advanced uh, autonomous driving hardware package on board with uh, you know, uh, uh, NVIDIA's orange chipsets, as well as our own proprietary architecture, uh, as well as uh, software stack. We believe that G9 will be the smartest vehicle for autonomous driving on the uh, production side in China in, in this class. All right, I I'm looking forward to covering all of this in this series, so I, I can't wait. Now, let's talk about Europe. I know you've opened four showrooms there in the last three months. You call them the experience stores. But what is the plan for the rest of the year for the European consumers? Well, Europe is a very important market for us. Uh, strategically, we want to be a global player. Uh, we don't want to be just limited in China. Our technology is leading not just in China, we think it's leading in, the, in, in globally as well. So we want to offer the best technology to international customers. Europe is a, a market we believe has huge potential because it has higher um, consumer awareness for EV products. It has a great infrastructure to support EV operation and government is very, very also supporting the EV initiatives. Um, but we want to be very prudent. Uh, we are a young company. We, we, we need to build up our capabilities and infrastructures and brand uh, in a measured pace. Um, so that's why we picked four markets we believe are most attractive for EV development, which are Norway, Netherlands, Sweden, and Denmark. Uh, we want to also test direct operations because we believe our technology right now, you know, we want to have the ability to sell directly to customers to convey our product messages. So I think that will take time. So we are very hopeful that these four markets with our direct selling operations will give us uh, ability to gain a foothold in a very important market. It also give the world a peak of our you know, industry leading technology and products. And I think in a year or two, we hope to establish a firm operation in Europe and expand to other parts of the countries of European continent. All right, now let's talk about something very different because, you know, there's a pressure right now on automakers to make the uh, electric cars, the green cars in green ways. Uh, the uh, carbon neutrality is, is the cool phrase nowadays. Now tell us, how is Xpeng trying to achieve that? Well, even though Xpeng is a very young company, uh, you know, we have probably less than eight years of operation, but we are focused on environmental friendly agenda from the day one. Uh, as a company, all our products are designed to be friendly to the environment. Uh, our first product, G3, the second product, P7, and P5, which is sold, beginning to sell in last year, together in 2021 has accounted for over 1 million uh, metric tons of carbon dioxide emission reduction um, in its life cycle. So this is huge, you know, obviously benefit to the environment. And also in our manufacturing plants, we have employed solar powered panels that has actually uh, also caused uh, over 1500 metric tons of carbon dioxide savings or uh, emission reductions. Um, and in our you know, material utilization, we have recorded more than 97% of recycling of, you know, sort of uh, materials, both in terms of waste waters, so waste materials, um, which is far exceeds the, uh, the, the measures uh, demanded by the governments here. Uh, and then as a company, we are very much R&D focused on innovation, which I think is a key proponent of environmental safety uh, operations. So if you look at our um, investment in R&D, which accounted for almost 20% of our revenue, most recent financials, and our headcounts, we have over 5,000 R&D staff supporting the growth of innovation, which largely will also be deployed in environmental friendly technology like EV and battery and other operations. So overall, you know, we are very, very much committed to ESG agenda and environmental safety and protection uh, ideals. 
So as a company, I think this is a long-term commitment from the very top, where the senior management and the board is focused on that. We have a ESG committee that's set up in the board level, at the management level, and also at the operations levels to ensure we have top-notch focus on this area. Thank you, Brian, for breaking down the Q1 results. And as Brian said, Xpong has many exciting news coming up in the next few weeks and the rest of the year. So don't forget to follow us right here to be the first to learn about all things Xpong. My name is Alex Guberman. See you next time. And remember to stay charged.